Hello, explorers. Are you ready to go on an amazing journey? Today, we are traveling to Australasia, a fascinating part of our world that is home to some of the most unique animals you won't find anywhere else. From hopping kangaroos, to laughing kookaburras, to spiny echidnas, these are creatures that will spark your imagination and make you say, wow. So fasten your seatbelts, grab your binoculars, and let's set off on an adventure of discovery. Travel with us to the eucalyptus forests of Australia to meet the adorable koala. Despite the common misconception, koalas are not bears but marsupials, related to kangaroos and wombats. Koalas have a specialized diet. They eat eucalyptus leaves almost exclusively, consuming up to one kilogram a day. To digest these tough leaves, koalas have a unique organ called a cecum, which breaks down the leaves into nutrients. Eucalyptus leaves are also the main source of hydration for koalas. Koalas have a thick and woolly fur which is incredibly soft to touch. This fur acts as an excellent insulator, protecting them from both the extreme heat and cold. Their fur is also a cushion when they sleep on tree branches. While they might look cuddly and friendly, koalas are solitary animals and mark their territory by rubbing their chest against the trees. Male koalas have a dark scent gland in the center of their chest for this purpose. Koalas have a unique communication method. They make a variety of sounds, the most noticeable being the bellow of the male koala during the breeding season. This bellow is incredibly loud and serves to attract females while also warning off other males. Like kangaroos, koalas are marsupials, which means the females have a pouch where the newborn, called a joey, develops. The joey stays in the pouch for around six months before it starts to emerge and cling to its mother's back. Koalas sleep for up to 18 and 20 hours a day. They need a lot of sleep due to the low-energy diet of eucalyptus leaves, and also because it takes a lot of energy to digest them. Sadly, koalas are listed as a vulnerable species due to habitat loss. Conservation efforts are ongoing to protect this unique and wonderful animal. Travel with Let's jump into one of the most iconic symbols of Australia, the kangaroo. Australia is home to four different types of kangaroos, the red kangaroo, eastern grey kangaroo, western grey kangaroo, and the antilopine kangaroo. These four species come in various sizes and colors, but they all share the unique ability to hop on their strong back legs. Kangaroos are known for their powerful hind legs and large feet, designed for speed and travel. The red kangaroo, the largest of all kangaroo species, can leap up to 8 meters in a single bound and can reach speeds of over 50 kilometers per h when chased by a predator. Their long tails are not just for balance when hopping, but they also serve as a rudder for direction control. One of the most charming things about kangaroos is their method of parenting. Female kangaroos have a front opening pouch where their young, called joeys, grow and develop. Joeys are tiny when born, around 2.5 centimeters long, but they climb into their mother's pouch and attach themselves to a teat, where they continue to grow for several months. In dry seasons, kangaroos eat mostly grass, but they have been known to eat leaves, flowers, ferns, and even insects during wet periods. Kangaroos have a unique adaptation. They can put off having babies when the environment is too harsh for the offspring to survive. Kangaroos are social animals, often found in groups called mobs or troops. These groups provide protection from predators and a social structure for mating. Males, often called boomers, compete with each other for the right to mate with females, often leading to boxing matches using their front legs. Kangaroos are incredibly strong swimmers, a fact that surprises many people. If threatened, a kangaroo may head for water and if pursued, might use its front paws to hold the predator underwater to drown it. Kangaroos have a fascinating relationship with humans. They feature prominently in Aboriginal mythology. They're an essential part of Australia's national emblem and are even honored on the Australian coat of arms. Despite their cultural significance, kangaroos are sometimes seen as pests by farmers due to their large numbers and the damage they can cause to fences and crops. Conservation efforts focus on maintaining a balance between kangaroo populations, agricultural interests, 
and preserving biodiversity. Let's venture into the Tasmanian wilderness, where the infamous Tasmanian devil resides. This creature is the world's largest carnivorous marsupial, following the extinction of the thylacine in 1936. Despite its size, the Tasmanian devil is capable of surprising speed and endurance, and can climb trees and swim across rivers. The Tasmanian devil has a very strong and sturdy build with a large head to house powerful jaws. It has the strongest bite per body mass of any living mammalian carnivore, which it uses to eat all parts of its prey, including bones and fur. These creatures are mainly nocturnal and spend their days alone in a den or a burrow. They have a keen sense of smell and can detect carcasses up to one kilometer away. Tasmanian devils are known for their ear-piercing screeches and fierce temper. They're very expressive and use physical postures, vocalizations, and scents to communicate with each other. These behaviors are often misinterpreted as aggression, but are usually part of a complex social interaction. Like many marsupials, female Tasmanian devils have a pouch. After giving birth, the young devils, called joeys, crawl into their mother's pouch and latch onto a teat. Unlike kangaroos, the female devil's pouch opens to the rear, not the front. Tasmanian devils have a diverse diet and can eat a variety of food items. They are primarily scavengers and consume the carcasses of dead animals. However, they also hunt live prey such as insects, birds, fish, and small mammals. Sadly, the Tasmanian devil population has been severely affected by a contagious form of facial tumor disease. This disease is passed between devils when they bite each other's faces during feeding or social interaction. There have been significant efforts to save these creatures from extinction, including captive breeding programs and scientific research into the disease. The Tasmanian devil holds a significant place in Tasmanian culture and folklore, often depicted as a symbol of the Tasmanian wilderness. Despite its fearsome reputation, it plays a vital role in maintaining the balance of nature by keeping the environment free from carrion and controlling populations of harmful pests. Delve into the Australian bush and you'll come across the charming wombat, an often underappreciated but incredibly fascinating creature. Wombats are marsupials, which means they carry their young in a pouch. However, unlike kangaroos, a wombat's pouch is backwards to prevent it from filling with dirt when they dig. Wombats are master excavators. Using their powerful forelimbs and toughened claws, they can dig extensive burrow systems with tunnels and sleeping chambers. A single wombat burrow can be up to 30 meters long and 3.5 meters deep. The wombat's signature trait is its cube-shaped droppings. This unusual shape helps the droppings stay put and mark territory, rather than rolling away. Wombats are the only animals in the world known to produce cube-shaped droppings. Despite their chubby appearance, wombats can move quite quickly when they need to, and can reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers per h, 25 miles per hour. Their sturdy build helps them plow through the underbrush and escape from predators. Wombats have an exceptional sense of smell, which they use to locate food, detect predators, and recognize other wombats. They mainly eat grasses, roots, and bark, feeding during the night and resting in their burrows during the day. They're also quite solitary and have well-defined home ranges, which they defend fiercely from other wombats. However, they will share their burrows with others during harsh weather or when a female is raising her young. Wombat mothers are dedicated caregivers. After giving birth, the baby wombat, called a joey, will live in the mother's pouch for about six to seven months. Even after it leaves the pouch, the joey will stay with its mother for another year or so until it's fully independent. The wombat's thick, toughened rear hide is its best defense against predators. When threatened, a wombat will dive into a tunnel and block the entrance with its rear, which is tough enough to withstand bites from predators. Unfortunately, wombats face numerous threats, including habitat loss, road accidents, and a disease called sarcoptic mange. Conservation efforts are ongoing to protect these adorable, industrious creatures and their habitats. From their unique droppings to their impressive digging skills, 
Wombats are truly one-of-a-kind animals with many interesting qualities that make them a vital part of Australia's diverse wildlife. Welcome to the world of emus, Australia's largest native bird and the second largest bird in the world by height, after its relative the ostrich. Emus can stand tall at up to 6.2 feet, 1.9 meters, and their long legs allow them to take strides of up to 9 feet, 2.7 meters, when running. Despite their size, emus are known to be quite fast and can reach speeds of up to 31 miles per hour, 50 kilometers per h. They use their strong legs not only to run fast, but also to kick in self-defense. Imagine a bird that can outrun you and pack a powerful kick, too. Emus are flightless birds. Instead of wings for flying, they have small, rudimentary wings that they use for balance when running at high speeds and for cooling down on hot days by exposing the skin under the feathers to the air. Their diet is quite diverse and they can eat a variety of plants and insects. Emus have even been known to swallow rocks and pebbles to help grind up the food in their gizzard, which is a specialized part of their stomach. One of the most fascinating things about emus is their parenting. The male emu does most of the parenting. After the female lays her large green eggs, the male incubates them for about eight weeks without eating, drinking, or even leaving the nest. Once the chicks hatch, the male continues to care for them, teaching them how to find food and protecting them from predators. The fluffy brown chicks stay with their dad for about a year and a half. Emus are social birds and are often seen traveling in pairs or family groups. However, during the breeding season, they can form large flocks of up to a hundred birds. Emus are well adapted to their environment and can tolerate a range of temperatures and conditions. They can go without food for weeks, surviving off the fat reserves in their bodies, and can travel long distances to find food and water. Despite being quite common and not currently considered endangered, emus do face threats from habitat loss, particularly when their nesting grounds are disturbed. They are also sometimes considered a nuisance by farmers when they eat or trample crops. The emu is an iconic symbol of Australia, featured on the country's coat of arms alongside the kangaroo. Their ability to survive in Australia's harsh climates, their unique parenting, and their impressive stature all make emus a fascinating part of Australia's rich wildlife. Let's journey to Australia to learn about one of the most unique animals in the world, the platypus. These creatures are one of only five species of monotremes, the only mammals known to lay eggs instead of giving birth to live young. The platypus is often considered a biological oddity because it has a lot of features that you wouldn't expect to find together on the same animal. It has a bill and webbed feet like a duck, a tail like a beaver, and it lays eggs like a reptile. Despite being small in size, the platypus is an excellent swimmer. Its body is streamlined, and its front feet are equipped with large, webbed flippers, which it uses to paddle through the water. When on land, it can actually fold this webbing back, revealing sharp claws that it uses for walking, digging burrows, and handling food. One of the most fascinating things about the platypus is that it has the ability to sense electric fields generated by the movements of prey in the water. This sixth sense is made possible by electroreceptors located in the skin of its bill. This makes the platypus a very efficient hunter, even when diving underwater where it cannot see its prey. Platypuses are generally nocturnal and spend most of the day in their burrows. They dig these burrows in the riverbanks, and the entrance is usually underwater. When it comes to their diet, platypuses are carnivorous. They feed on a wide variety of freshwater invertebrates, including insects, worms, and crustaceans. They have a unique way of eating, storing their food in special cheek pouches while they're underwater, then chewing and swallowing it once they come back to the surface. Although it might not look like it, male platypuses are one of the few mammals that are venomous. They have a spur on their hind foot that can deliver a venom potent enough to cause severe pain to humans. The female platypus lays one to three eggs and keeps them warm by holding them between her body and her tail. After hatching, the young are completely dependent on their mother and feed on her milk for several months. The platypus, with its blend of unique features, is a fascinating example of Australia's diverse and interesting wildlife. 
Conservation efforts are in place to protect these animals from threats such as habitat loss and water pollution. To sum up, the platypus is a unique and captivating creature, showcasing the remarkable biodiversity found in Australia's freshwater ecosystems. Now let's take a trip to the smallest continent, Australia, to meet the world's happiest animal, the quokka. The quokka is an adorable, small marsupial native to Western Australia, including several small islands off the coast, particularly Rottnest Island. Quokkas are about the size of a domestic cat and look like a small wallaby or kangaroo. They have a brown coat, a broad face, rounded ears, and a long tail which they use for balance when hopping. These creatures are famous for their friendly and curious nature. Quokkas aren't afraid of humans, and they often approach people. That's why they are famous for their selfies with tourists. Despite their friendly demeanor, quokkas are skilled climbers. They can climb trees up to 1.5 meters in height to reach for leaves and fruit, their main food sources. Speaking of their diet, quokkas are herbivores. They eat a variety of vegetation including grasses, leaves, and stems. They can also eat their own feces to extract maximum nutrients from their food. Quokkas have a unique adaptation for survival in their dry environment. They can reabsorb water from their feces before excretion, helping them stay hydrated when water sources are scarce. Just like kangaroos, quokkas are marsupials. Female quokkas carry their young, known as joeys, in a pouch for several months until they are old enough to fend for themselves. Quokkas have an unusual survival strategy when faced with predators. If a mother quokka is threatened by a predator while carrying her baby, she may throw her joey from her pouch. This strategy distracts the predator and allows the mother quokka to escape. Despite their cheerful demeanor and unique traits, quokkas are currently listed as vulnerable. Habitat loss and predators like foxes and cats pose threats to them. However, on the predator-free rottenest island, quokkas are thriving. In conclusion, quokkas are fascinating creatures with their unique adaptations for survival, friendly nature, and adorable appearance. Their reputation as the world's happiest animal has made them a beloved icon of Australian wildlife. Let's journey to the land down under Australia to meet the largest member of the kingfisher family, the kookaburra. Known for its distinctive, laugh-like call, the kookaburra is an iconic Australian bird. Kookaburras are known for their loud, distinctive call, which sounds uncannily like loud, echoing human laughter. They're often called the Bushman's Clock because they tend to call at dawn and dusk. Despite being a part of the kingfisher family, kookaburras don't usually eat fish. Instead, they're carnivorous birds with a varied diet. They primarily eat insects, but they'll also take on larger prey like snakes, mice, and small reptiles. Kookaburras hunt by perching on a branch and swooping down to catch their prey on the ground. Kookaburras are known for their unique way of preparing their food. They kill their prey by whacking it against a tree or a rock, essentially tenderizing it before eating. And unlike many birds, they swallow their food whole. They're social birds, often living in family groups. When a young kookaburra grows up, it often stays with its parents to help them raise the next generation. This cooperative breeding behavior is not very common in the bird world and is interesting to many researchers. Kookaburras have a special place in Australian culture and folklore. They're featured in several traditional Aboriginal Dreamtime stories and are a common motif in Australian art and literature. Their distinctive call has also been used as a stock sound effect in jungle-themed movies to create an exotic atmosphere. Kookaburras are cavity nesters, usually laying their eggs in a hole in a tree. They have a clutch of about two to four eggs, which both parents, and often the older siblings from previous broods, help to incubate. Kookaburras are territorial birds, and family groups will defend their territory against others. During territorial disputes, kookaburras are known to laugh, creating a chorus of calls which can be heard for some distance. Even though they are not currently endangered, Kookaburras face threats from habitat loss due to land clearing for agriculture and urban development. It's important to protect their habitats to ensure these iconic Australian birds continue to thrive. To wrap up, the kookaburra is a unique bird with fascinating behaviors and a distinct laugh-like call that has made it a beloved symbol of Australia. 
Say hello to one of the most unique birds in the world, the kiwi. This bird, which is native to New Zealand, is a truly fascinating creature and full of surprises. One of the most remarkable things about kiwis is their size. They are about the size of a chicken and are, in fact, the smallest ratites, a family of flightless birds. They measure anywhere from 14 to 18 inches, 35 to 45 centimeters, and weigh between 3 to 9 pounds, 1.3 to 4 kilograms. Despite being flightless, kiwis have some features that make them very special. They have tiny, almost non-existent wings and no tail, but their legs are quite powerful. Kiwis are known for their strong legs and long toes, which they use for running and for kicking in self-defense. Kiwis have a long, thin beak, which is about one-third of their body length. Unlike other birds, kiwis have their nostrils at the end of their beak. This unique feature allows them to have an excellent sense of smell, which they use to find food, including insects, worms, and berries. They also have a good sense of hearing, which they use to detect predators and other kiwis. Kiwi birds are mostly nocturnal. They sleep during the day in burrows, nests, or under dense vegetation, and forage for food at night. This is why you might not see them often even if you're visiting their home in New Zealand. A fascinating aspect about kiwis is their egg laying. Kiwi eggs are huge. The egg of a kiwi can be up to 20% of the mother's body weight. That's like a human baby weighing 30 pounds at birth. This is the largest known egg in proportion to the size of the bird in the entire animal kingdom. After laying the egg, the female leaves the incubation to the male. The male will sit on the egg for about 75 to 85 days until it hatches. After hatching, the chicks are quite independent and are capable of fending for themselves. Kiwis are a symbol of New Zealand and are a big part of the country's culture. However, kiwis face threats from habitat loss and introduced predators like stoats, dogs, and cats. Conservation efforts are ongoing to protect this unique and treasured bird. The kiwi, with its distinctive look, large eggs, and nocturnal habits, is one of the most extraordinary birds you'll ever come across, showcasing the incredible diversity of nature in New Zealand. Welcome to the intriguing world of the echidna, also known as the spiny anteater. Echidnas are one of the most unique creatures in the world and are one of only two mammals known to lay eggs, the other being the platypus. Echidnas are covered in coarse hair and spines, which are actually long, hollow hairs. These spines, similar to a hedgehog's, provide a great defense mechanism against predators. When threatened, echidnas can curl into a ball, with only their spines exposed, or they can dig into the ground, leaving only their spines sticking out. Their body size can range from 14 to 30 inches, 35.5 to 76 centimeters, and they can weigh between 4.4 and 15.4 pounds, 2 and 7 kilograms. Their long snout is not only characteristic but also very functional, helping them to find food. Speaking of food, echidnas are insectivores. They have a particularly long, sticky tongue, which they use to catch their prey. Their diet mainly consists of ants and termites, although they can also eat other insects and invertebrates. Interestingly, echidnas don't have teeth. Instead, they grind their food between the bottoms of their mouths and their tongues. Echidnas are solitary animals and usually only come together during the breeding season. Female echidnas lay a single egg, which is placed into a pouch on her abdomen. The egg hatches after about 10 days, and the tiny, hairless puggle, baby echidna, stays in the pouch and nurses for several months. Once the puggle starts to grow spines, it is moved to a burrow where it stays until it is old enough to fend for itself. The mother continues to return to the burrow to nurse the puggle until it is fully weaned. Echidnas have a low body temperature and slow metabolism, which allow them to go without food for long periods. They can also lower their body temperature and metabolism even further to enter a state of torpor during extreme weather conditions. Echidnas are found all over Australia, from the high mountains to the deserts and everything in between. They are well adapted to their environments and can be found in many different habitats. Let's meet the Kea, a unique parrot that lives not in the tropical rainforest like many of its relatives, 
but in the alpine regions of New Zealand's South Island. Chaos are known for their intelligence and curiosity, which makes them very interesting to study. They're one of the few bird species known to play just for the fun of it. They play with each other, and with objects they find in their environment. They're also known to investigate backpacks, boots, or even cars belonging to unwary tourists. Chaos are large parrots, measuring up to 19 inches, 48 centimeters in length, and weighing between 1 to 2 pounds, 0.5 to 1 kilogram. They have a beautiful mixture of colors on their plumage. While their outer feathers are a dull green color that helps them blend into the forest, their underwings are bright orange and scarlet, which you can see when they fly. Cuss have a strong hooked beak that they use for many different tasks. They can use their beaks to dig in the soil for plant roots, to pull bark off trees to find insects, and to open up bird eggs or sheep carcasses. Unlike most parrots, chaos are omnivorous. Their diet includes a wide range of foods from fruits, leaves, and roots, to insects, bird eggs, and small mammals. They have also been known to prey on sheep, though this behavior is rare and usually only seen in winter when other food sources are scarce. Chaos are social animals and often live in groups of up to 13 individuals. They communicate with each other using a variety of sounds, including whistles, screams, and trills. During the day, they are often seen flying together, playing, or searching for food. When it comes to nesting, chaos make their nests in crevices among the rocks or in hollow tree trunks. The female kia lays one to five eggs, and both parents take turns incubating the eggs for about three weeks. After hatching, the chicks stay in the nest for about three months before they're ready to venture out. During this time, the parents provide all their food and care. Like many native New Zealand animals, Kias face threats from habitat destruction and introduced predators like stoats and possums. They're also at risk from lead poisoning, as they sometimes chew on roofing and other materials that contain lead. Conservation efforts are being made to protect these incredible birds. The Kea, with its striking appearance, playful nature, and incredible adaptability, is truly an exceptional bird, showing us the wonders of New Zealand's alpine wildlife. Today, let's travel to New Zealand to encounter an extraordinary creature, the tuatara, a remarkable animal that is sometimes called a living fossil. This unique reptile is the last of its kind, and its ancestors date back to the age of dinosaurs. Tuataras are found exclusively in New Zealand. They prefer cool weather and can happily survive in temperatures well below what most reptiles can tolerate. They inhabit coastal forest and scrub habitats. Unlike any other reptiles, Tuataras have a third eye. This eye, known as a parietal or pineal eye, is on the top of their heads and has a retina, lens, and nerve endings. However, it's covered with scales and is not used for vision in the conventional sense. Scientists believe it may help regulate body temperature and circadian rhythms. Tuataras have a unique way of capturing their prey. They are ambush predators, which means they wait patiently for their food to come to them. Once the prey is within reach, they strike swiftly with their sharp teeth. Tuataras mainly eat insects, but they can also feast on spiders, small lizards, and bird eggs. One of the most fascinating aspects of the tuatara is its slow-paced life. These reptiles grow slowly, mature late, often not until they are 10 to 20 years old, and have been known to live for over a century. Some may even live up to 200 years. The tuatara has an incredibly slow metabolism, which contributes to its long life. It also means they can go for up to an hour without breathing, and can survive for many years without food. Tuatara females lay eggs only once every four years, the slowest reproductive rate of any reptile. The eggs have a remarkably long incubation period, taking between 12 to 15 months to hatch. In Maori culture, tuataras are regarded as guardians of knowledge and time, and their images appear in many traditional carvings and tattoos. Despite surviving for over 200 million years, tuataras are now under threat, primarily due to habitat loss and the introduction of predators such as rats. Efforts are being made to protect and conserve these unique creatures, including the establishment of predator-free islands where they can thrive. In conclusion, the tuatara is an extraordinary creature, a relic from the age of dinosaurs, 
with a unique biology and cultural significance that make it a truly fascinating study. Let's end our journey with one of the most unique and fascinating birds in the world, the cassowary. The cassowary is native to the tropical rainforests of New Guinea, northeastern Australia, and nearby islands. Cassowaries are large, flightless birds that stand out because of their vivid colors and distinctive features. They're known for their bright blue necks and two red wattles hanging down from it. The most notable feature of the cassowary is its cask, a helmet-like structure on top of its head. The cask is made of a spongy material covered in a layer of keratin, the same substance our nails and hair are made of. It's thought that the cask may help in pushing through the dense underbrush of the rainforest, in asserting dominance, or even in sound production. Cassowaries are among the heaviest birds in the world, and they can stand up to six feet tall. Despite their size, these birds are excellent swimmers and can even jump nearly seven feet off the ground. One thing that makes cassowaries unique is their diet. They are frugivores, which means they eat mainly fruit. In fact, they play a crucial role in the ecosystem as they distribute seeds through their droppings. But don't be fooled by their fruit-loving nature. Cassowaries have powerful legs and sharp claws. They can use these to defend themselves when they feel threatened, delivering powerful kicks that can be dangerous to potential predators. Just like many other birds, female cassowaries lay eggs but it's the male who incubates them and takes care of the chicks once they're hatched. A male cassowary can look after the chicks for up to nine months. While they may look a bit scary, cassowaries are actually quite shy and prefer to keep to themselves. They are mostly solitary animals, except during the breeding season. Cassowaries are considered vulnerable due to loss of habitat and human interaction, but efforts are being made to preserve their habitats and educate people about these beautiful, unique birds. In conclusion, cassowaries are truly exceptional birds with their bright colors, cask, and vital role in the ecosystem. Despite their formidable appearance, they're a crucial part of our world's biodiversity that deserves our respect and protection. And that wraps up our incredible journey through Australasia. We've hopped with kangaroos, laughed with kookaburras, dove with platypuses, and strutted with cassowaries. Each one of these animals has shown us the wonder of nature, teaching us to respect and cherish the incredible biodiversity of our planet. Remember, no matter how big or small, every creature has a unique story to tell and a special role to play in our world. So keep exploring, keep asking questions, and most importantly, keep loving our Earth and all its creatures. Until next time, explorers.